Today, we're looking at programmatically generating vector tiles using PostGIS. So this is our demo here. Here we have a lot of places or points of interest um, within Singapore. And so as we zoom in, you can see that we're loading the names of the places. So all of this is happening programmatically on the fly. And we can look into here. So as we're zooming out, the names disappear. And you can see we're calling here um, a Superbase function. So this is our REST API. And we're calling a remote procedure call, which is called Mapbox Vector Tile, MVT. And so what happens here is as we move and as we zoom in, um, this function additionally provides the name and some information. So for example, here, the name is wine and chef, the main category is wine bar. And so you can see the payload here um, that we're sending, it's just our zoom level and our XY coordinates. And then in the response, we're getting some, you know, big kind of string um, which is a base 64 encoded um, map box vector tile, which we can then point or uh, paint on the map. Now, additionally, we're doing, um, you know, then just using the ID, we're loading the details. So that's just using plain old um, Superbase JS. So this is a really great demo originally built by uh, Brandon Leo, uh, who is the maintainer of Proto Maps. Um, but he's also contributing um, or working with Overture Maps to make kind of all this places information available. And so for example, Meta is, you know, one um, part of Overture Maps uh, Foundation, which will provide, you know, places information or kind of open sources places information so that we can inject it into our own Superbase project. And so that is what we want to do here today. So the way this works is Overture Maps provides um, a Python library where we can use a bounding box um, to then extract a GeoJSON file of you know certain places within the data set. So once we've done that, we can then use a tool called OGR to OGR, um, which we can use to then you know um, basically turn the GeoJSON into SQL instructions so that we can then uh, ingest that SQL into our Superbase project. Okay, so let's get started with this. Now, as you know, anytime we get started with a new Superbase project, we can just head over to database.new. Um, we select our organization. So this project, uh, we're just going to call Super. Um, MVT, so that's Mapbox Vector Tile. We can have um, a password generated for us, then in that case, just make sure that you copy it and you store it securely. And then we have plenty of regions available. Now I'm here in Singapore, so I'll select Southeast Asia as the region. And then we'll just wait a minute for that project to spin up. So in the meantime, what we can do is we can install Overture Maps via pip install. And then we can download a bounding box. So this is specifically um, a bounding box around Singapore. And we can put that into a places of GeoJSON. Now this will be quite large. Uh, there's quite a lot of places around here, especially, um, you know, Meta, Facebook has kind of a lot of places information. So don't worry, this will take a while to kind of download to your machine. But um, so just let it run for a bit and then uh, come back to it. So once that is completed, we can open our places.geojson file and you can see it is just a very long file of, um, you know, kind of the coordinates, some metadata and things like that. So uh, we now need to turn that geojson into a SQL so that we can ingest it into our Superbase database. So for this, there is a tool called um, OGR to OGR. So uh, you can install that via uh, GDAL. So brew install um, GDAL, and then you can uh, just copy this uh, command. So using our places.json as input, 
we can then generate uh, a places.sql using this tool. Okay, and there we are. So our places.sql you can now see. Now, first of all, uh, we'll be you know using um, here uh, geometries and things. So we need to make sure that um, PostGIS is enabled on our database. Now, if you haven't used PostGIS before, um, I've linked you a video below of getting started with PostGIS. Now within Superbase, that is very easy. We can go to database, um, we can go to extensions, and then we can uh, simply put in PostGIS. So Superbase comes with a ton of extensions preloaded. And we want to make sure that we enable it on the um, extensions schema, or at least not enable it on the public schema. Um, now we can also do this here, you see the, the SQL instructions. So we can do this with create extensions if not exist um, with schema extensions. So that's exactly what um, the dashboard has done for us there. And then what we need to do is we need to um, ingest the data. So we can do this with, um, you know, just uh, Postgres on our local machine. Uh, and the way we need to do is we need to provide the host, um, the port, the user, uh, the um, uh, this is the database, this is the username, and then you know, the password that you um, saved earlier, it will prompt us to put that in. So what we can do is in our project, we go to project settings, uh, database, so we can see here, we can do um, a direct connection. So um, if we want to learn more kind of how to choose this mode. So if we want a direct kind of database connection, we can choose the session mode. So we'll say session mode here. And then our host is um, this part here. So actually, we can we can look at this here. So this is our host, this is our database name. Uh, and then this is our user. And so the password is uh, the one we used earlier to create our project. So we just need to update our user here. And then we want to ingest the places.sql. So we run this and can run this and now we need to provide the password that we saved earlier. In case you've forgotten your password, you can reset it here and then just make sure that you note it down. So we'll paste in the password here and then we can see we are um, running our ingestion. So places.sql is now being ingested. And so what we can do is we can look at our table um, places here. And so we see that we currently don't have any RLS on, we ingested uh, over 100,000 records, <laughs> that, that was pretty quick. So what we need to do is we want to enable a role of security. And then we only want to allow um, the read access for all uh, users, just the public read access here. So we can go to our SQL editor, uh, we can run this alter enable role level security policy and then uh, enable read access for all users. Great. And so now what um, we have if we go back to the table, we have our table ready, we can you can see now it's locked down, we have an off policy, and everything is good to go. So now the way we are actually generating these um, mapbox vector tiles is using um, a remote procedure call. And so we're creating um, a Postgres function called mapbox vex vector tile. And so this is using a bunch of really, really handy, um, you know, PostGIS methods. So for example, if we um, search for this, so as um, Macbox vector tile, um, this actually is an accredited function which returns a binary Macbox, vex uh, Macbox vector tile representation, um, which we then can use, you know, on kind of our map. Um, so we'll be using Map Libre as an example. Uh, we can use to render it to our map, which is really really neat. Okay, so you know, this is what we do the, the rendering on on the map. So here, um, what we'll need to do is we'll need to copy. So we can just say raw 
uh, and we can copy this into our project. So in the SQL editor, we can say new query. And now we can look at um, what is happening here. So uh, our map of ve vector tile um, remote procedure call will put in the zoom level as an integer and the x, y coordinates. And then what we do is we kind of define the bounds of the tile using sort of the uh, coordinates. And then we're transforming our um, geometries and clip them to the tile bounds. So now I would be lying if I understood kind of all of what is going on here. But there is kind of a web um, Mercator, I actually don't even know how to pronounce that. So, um, you know, Brandon is uh, someone very smart in the maps community who knows how to deal with this. Um, and so we're using kind of a transform here um, as mapbox vector tile geometry. And then what we can do is in the end, um, we can, you know, select that into a mapbox vector tile output. And we encode it. So um, the Postgres encode method, uh, we can just look that up. Uh, it takes some data and then, you know, um, kind of base 64 sort of encodes that and returns it as a string. So then we can send it to our um, project. And so that's, yeah, here, base 64. And then that is the base 64 string you saw earlier. So let's run this. Okay, so we have our function now defined our map of vec vector tile function. And so what we can do now is we can um, pull down here the index.html file from the project. And we open it up in VS code. And so now Brandon has just put um, his project details in there for the live demo. So all that we need to do is we need to go to our project settings to our API. And we just copy our URL uh, in here. And then we copy our public uh, anon key here give that a save. And so what you can see here is we have um, some methods to kind of turn our base 64 uh, to um, array buffer. So there's some um, helper methods. And then the way we're doing this here is actually we're just using the Superbase JS client. So this is our Superbase JS client using the RPC remote procedure call. And then um, we're basically adding a map leap protocol to then um, kind of encode sort of the data that we're getting back from our RPC method um, into kind of a base 64. Uh, so from base 64 string into an array buffer. And then the array buffer is what we return as data to our map leap um, engine. And then here you can see we have our map Libre. So we're just adding um, two sources. So one is our Superbase source. So that is the protocol that we just defined here. That's the Superbase protocol. Um, and then the other one is ProtoMap. So that's our base map um, layer that we're loading from um, a static uh, file using the ProtoMaps um, API. We can also self host this. Um, so I'll link you down below a video. Uh, where you can learn how to self host proto maps on your Superbase project as well. So we'll see that. And then we're just adding some layers kind of for the styling based on sort of the different um, categories. So beauty salon hotel. So we're just assigning kind of different um, colors the circle radius. And so one um, cool feature that is encoded here. So if we go back, if you look at this here, so we are actually based on the zoom level. So only if like our zoom level is um, more than 13, we then actually return the names from um, the metadata JSON. Um, so you can see here that uh, in the table, so our places we have um, a bunch of metadata um, here uh, in our names. And uh, you can see uh, categories as well. Um, so we we have a bunch of metadata here. And so names, um, primary. So in our case, basically any um, time, 
when our zoom image is larger than 13, then we're including the names in the payload. Um, and so, you know, this way we can uh, minimize the payload when, you know, we're zooming out. So as we're kind of zooming out, you see the names will um, disappear and we're only getting our points. And then as we're kind of zooming in, uh, as we guess kind of below the certain zoom level, uh, we will then get the names loaded back in. And when we click in, we can then use Superbase JS. Um, so you can see that here in the code as well. We just have on click handler here that says load details. Uh, and we just have a load details method where we're actually just using a Superbase JS client to then, you know, load some metadata. So again, sources, um, website. So we can actually go into the nested um, JSONB as well. And we're just filtering by the ID that we got from the click event. Yes, so that is pretty much it. We can now run this locally on our machine using the Python um, simple web server. And um, that I have it running on port 8000. Uh, so if we now go to localhost um, port on port 8000, we will get um, our project loaded and we can now see um, here very small uh, Singapore so as we're zooming in we'll get all our points uh, onto the map uh, loaded in so you can see we're loading um, kind of the movement here and so as we're getting closer and closer we're then making more requests um, to load in our movement data. And so you could see um, that set uh, X, Y coordinates. And then as we're clicking here, loading details, we're loading the details in from our places. So um, you can see here, this is our Superbase project. So in this case, we're fetching directly from the database using PostGIS um, and yeah. That is just incredible how powerful PostGIS is uh, allowing us to generate uh, map, box map box vector tiles. So definitely check out the source code and see, you know, maybe this is useful for your own projects where you're, you know, maybe ingesting and generating places information. You can use the Overture Maps open source places information. And do let us know uh, in the comments below what else you want to learn, you know, any kind of PostGIS related things or any Superbase Postgres things. Just let us know and we'll see if we can get a video out for this. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.